Hello fellow wood turners, this is Paul Mayer with Toolmetrics. Hopefully you saw a video that we put together a couple years ago on the Laguna Revo 1836 lathe, which was new at that time. And now they've sent us out a Revo 2436, the big brother to the 1836. And we're going to talk about uh, a lot of the differences between these two machines, some of the similarities. Um, but if you haven't seen that 1836 video, I'd encourage you to take a look at that because that will uh, provide a lot of detailed information that will apply here as well so I can focus more on the differences. So the overall ca capabilities of the machine, so first of all, starting with the obvious uh, difference, the additional capacity, swing capacity, uh, starting with 12 inches between the center of the spindle and the lathe bed, and you multiply that by two for swing capacity, giving you the ability to turn an object up to 24 inches. That's a big, big hunk of wood. Um, with that much additional mass, you want more power, and the 2436 comes with a three horsepower motor, which is 50% more power than the 1836. Very noticeable. I've turned eight large bowls in the 17 to 21 inch range over the last two weeks, and I could really feel the difference. Uh, that additional power really comes into play when you're at the edge of a, a massive bowl and you're taking a heavy cut uh, with the variable frequency drive. It responds, it delivers that additional power and keeps you spinning, doesn't let you get bogged down as you're turning that heavy object. From a spindle capacity perspective, this is identical to the 1836. So you've got 36 inch between centers. If you add the additional optional uh, bed extension, that gets you up to 56 inches of spindle capacity. And you can even bolt on another bed uh, to double the spindle capacity if you're really into turning large vessels. So lots of capacity, lots of power on the machine. I'm going to walk through and talk about each of the key features of the machine now uh, so that you can kind of have an understanding of the capabilities and the differences. Just like on the 1836, this bed is made of high quality steel construction rather than your typical cast iron. This means better stability. I could not measure any variation across the steel bed, which means that the banjo will slide smoothly and your headstock and tailstock will remain in alignment. My thinnest feeler gauge is about half the thickness of a sheet of paper and it wouldn't fit anywhere along the bed, making this one of the flattest tools that I've ever measured in the shop. The 2436 weighs in at 532 pounds without the bed extension, which is more than 100 pounds heavier than the 1836. That means even more stability when you're turning large bowls. Part of that weight comes from a bigger tailstock and headstock, but I noticed that the frame was also quite a bit heavier when I was assembling it, which is because the cast iron legs are actually 80% thicker than on the 1836. Bowl turners will also like the cone-shaped tailstock which provides better access when you're shaping the bottom of a bowl, just like on the 1836. I love this feature. The 2436 has a control panel positioned on the headstock, anodized aluminum plate, large user-friendly buttons and knobs for speed and direction control, and the large clear RPM display indicates the machine's actual rotational speed while the machine is in operation. A new addition on the 2436 is a standard second control panel that can be mounted in one of a couple different mounting brackets on the machine, one high and one low in front of the machine. These are both nicely angled toward the operator for convenience. This is handy for a couple reasons. First, if you're doing large spindle work and operating away from the headstock, you're closer to the speed control and the off switch. And for bowl turning, no more having to reach around a spinning bowl to make a speed adjustment or turn off the machine. Now in case you're wondering, I've already asked, and this second switch unfortunately cannot be added to the Laguna 1836 or any other lathe. To use the remote control, you simply flip a switch in the back of the machine to determine which panel controls the lathe. Another nice convenience is that the emergency stop works on both panels at all times. Now, in the 1836 video, I went on and on about the power delivery system, so I'll try to contain myself a bit here but the 2436 utilizes the same variable frequency drive to convert single phase power into three phase power, which means smooth transition from slow speed to high speed and literally every speed in the full range from 50 RPM to 3500 RPM is in the perfect sweet spot of machine and it's running at peak performance and efficiency at each of those speeds. This VFD is also what provides the speed control on the system so that when you lean into that heavy cut, 
Delayed responds by delivering more power and maintaining your designated speed in spite of the increased resistance. The 2436 has two speed ranges. On the low end, for high torque, it goes from 50 RPM to 1300. That's what I generally use for bowl turning. And on the high speed range, it goes from 135 RPM to 3500 RPM, and that works great for spindle turning. To switch between the two speed ranges, the belt is simply moved from one pulley wheel to the next. No tools are required, and it only takes a couple seconds to make the move. All right, let's talk about the banjo and tool rest. This is an area of the lathe that received a lot of love and attention when Laguna designed the 2436. As with the 1836, the tool rest is heavy duty cast iron tipped with a six millimeter piece of spring steel. This is a quality item that I would normally think of as an aftermarket upgrade, but no need to upgrade this one. After two years of abuse, the spring steel tip on the 1836 doesn't have a single nick on it, and the gouges still glide perfectly across it. Also, like on the 1836, the post locking mechanism grabs the post evenly by applying pressure around the full circumference of the post rather than pressing a screw up against the post. The banjo on the 2436 has several noteworthy advantages over the 1836. First, it's longer, but it sort of has to be to provide the necessary reach when you're working on large bowls. Uh, but another nice upgrade here is the control lever, which is a full two inches longer, and it makes it easier to torque down and release the banjo. This is nice because when you're working on big bowls especially, you want to really lock that banjo in place to hold up against the heavy jarring pressure placed on it by the bowl. Uh, that thing locks in place like it's welded. Another nice detail here is the narrower vertical post column that is less intrusive and a 45 degree chamfer on the back side to provide more clearance for high angle turning. They've also added a notch on the rear of the vertical post to install the locking mechanism there if you prefer to have it out of the way as well. And if we flip the banjo over, you can really see some differences. The 2436 is beefier in a couple respects. First, the base is 21% wider, so it has more surface contact and grabbing power when it's locked down. Also, the eccentric rod has a 28% larger diameter, providing a smoother action with more leverage. The bottom line here is that that thing locks down easily with greater holding power. As with the 1836, the tailstock on the 2436 is a standout feature. It's heavy cast iron, so it brings a lot of stability and it glides super nicely along the steel bed. The quill has a whopping four and a half inches of travel, which I've found to be a nice luxury when turning bowls and wanting to keep the tailstock out of the way as I hollow out the interior of the bowl. This is also nice for making projects like pens and pepper mills that require deep boring operations. The 2436 also has a nice indexing feature, which is useful if you want to rotate the piece in precise increments when the lathe is turned off, which is popular for carving, routing, and piercing operations. This feature works the same as on the 1836, and there's a full video on the indexing feature on the 1836 on a Toolmetrics channel if you're interested in that. It's one thing to talk about the lathe feature by feature, but I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the overall experience of using this machine. In addition to all the standard convenience that I've talked about, the performance of this machine is simply remarkable. The motor powers through heavy cuts, even on bowls over 20 inches in diameter. I was able to put a large blank on and spin a rough blank at over 400 RPM with no vibration whatsoever. I don't always even bother rounding blanks on the bandsaw with this machine because I can, uh, I can take a chainsaw and blank and round it out so quickly on the lathe that it almost doesn't matter. The smooth operation is so sweet for finishing cuts where that shearing action just peels the wood away, leaving a beautiful finish that requires very little sanding. Now the 2436 comes nicely equipped as standard, but it also has a bunch of accessories available. I don't have all of them. You can see them on the Laguna website, but I'll walk you through the ones that I have here. These are high quality halogen lights with double arms so you can position it wherever you want to get the light on the project. Uh, it's nice to have two of them in place. Obviously for long spindle work this comes in handy, for, but even for turning bowls I find that a lot of times I'll have both of these in use. So I never thought I needed uh, auxiliary lighting on a lathe, but after I've experienced it, now there's no going back.
I already talked a bit about the 20 inch bed extension. This extends the spindle capacity to 56 inches and it also creates a well to expand the bowl capacity to 38 inches. I also have the mobile base which is a must have in my small shop as a lathe will get moved up against the wall when not in use and it's a heavy machine. The build quality here is superb and I can move the lathe around the shop effortlessly. Even when the floor has a bit of debris on it, the large polyurethane wheels have no problem rolling the big machine around. Well, that about wraps it up. Uh, please let me know if you have questions on this machine. I've, I'm going to continue to use this. I'm planning to do a couple project videos on this, so subscribe to the Toolmetrics channel and stay tuned for those. Uh, meanwhile, thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon.